Hey guys, that was a hawk by the way. Welcome to Homesteading Off the Grid. Good morning. I don't know if you caught that little blip there on the screen uh, when this video started, but that was a hawk. It's 6.40 a.m. and my beautiful bride is getting her beauty sleep. And as you know, it's effective. I've said that before, but you've seen her in some of our other videos. So I don't disturb her beauty sleep after I've had my coffee and it's time to start rambling. I let her get it because it works. But I've been watching that hawk up here this morning. I've been sitting up here for a while um, reading, finishing my coffee and reading. I'm reading, finally gotten around to Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. It's several years old, but I'm just now getting to it. I've been working so much, my reading has suffered. But uh, I had yesterday off. I have today off. If you've been following, you know I now get two days a week off, whereas for months I only had one day a week off, and then there, of course, for several weeks, I didn't get any days off until I called out sick. Um, but I'm not going to talk about this job I hate that makes me miserable for too much this morning because I want to tell you about some big plans I have for the homestead. I'm excited because what's, I guess I've, I'm nine days away from my last day at work. Um, if I make it, you know, I'm trying to do the right thing. I turn in my two weeks' notice, and I'm I'm doing my best to work it out. But at the same time, I'm looking out for me. Unfortunately, I work for an entity that views uh, people who do the right thing as weak and people who are to be exploited, and they do. So just real quick, I wanted to show you a note I wrote with my crayon this morning. It says, Dear, I didn't fill in the name yet because I'm not going to reveal it until I'm done, but Dear, fill in the blank, I, and then my name, Kevin e. Lake, uh, hereby resign from, and then them, uh, effective immediately and then I'll write the date in there if I need to and I put 2018 not 2013 got it right today um, that's just kind of like my my safety net if I go in there and the suck gets too bad and it's just uh, I, I'm ready I'm a bit again I'm gonna try to work out my two weeks but um, you know, I've been hearing a lot of stories from a lot of people um, though I've not named my employer it's if you've worked for this entity or if you still do and you've been watching these videos it's pretty easy to figure it out and some of the horror stories I've been hearing are just heartbreaking um, so it seems to be a culture within this entity not just my specific location though there does seem to be a, a problem with a bully at our place um, somebody came up to me the other day at work a, a guy who has been there more than 30 years and was telling me about a similar situation uh, uh, a person he works with in his department recently went through and basically that is uh, this individual upset the person in charge uh, somehow and so the person in charge scheduled this person who upset them to work only two days a week took him down from full time to two hours a week her plan being to get him to quit it's called um, constructive dismissal it's illegal but it's very much practiced at this place and uh, I, I don't know how, I guess this individual had uh, maybe a partner who had an income or other means, but they filed a grievance with the union, was able to stick it out, and got back to where they're now uh, getting there 40 hours a week or so. And, and this individual got some back pay. So that story ended up uh, with, a, with a good ending, um, but it was unfortunate that this person had to be bullied. Uh, this person had a one and a half hour drive one way to get to work, work two hours and a one and a half hour drive home. So they were driving three hours to work two hours. Um, so I don't know, the, the point of this is this guy said, you've got to tell our story. And I told him, I will, when the time is right. And that time is nine days away at most. But as you saw from the note I just wrote, I mean, it could be this evening. Well, not going to be this evening because I have today off, but it could be tomorrow evening. Um, but hopefully it's nine days. Now, with that said, I want to talk about my big plans for the homestead. You saw the hawk at the beginning of the video. If you've been following us, you know that yesterday we had some amazing things happen with wildlife. Cleopatra, our guard cat, uh, treed Pitt the raccoon, who's been eating our corn. And we had a uh, wren fly into our house. My wife had woken up, was drinking her coffee, and I was in there, made her coffee, gave her her coffee, kissed her on the head, sat down. Let's talk to her for a little bit, and this bird came flying into our house, and uh, I, I thought it was a thrasher, but it was a wren. Somebody corrected me. My mind, uh, it's kind of fried a little bit from working so much for the last six months, and uh, I mean, I, I knew it was, I know it's a wren. Uh, we feed him in the winter, and it's one of my favorite birds. And by the way, that hawk, 
he or she is hunting. Um, we have, my favorite bird here is the American Golden Finch. They're yellow, you've probably seen them. Uh, they have black wings. They look like wild parakeets. And when I was a kid, we had a couple of yellow parakeets in a cage, and I always felt sorry for them. We eventually got rid of them. But uh, I see these little American Golden Finches, and I feel like I have dozens and dozens of wild parakeets at any given time here on my property. And in early winter, once all this tall grass uh, goes to seed, we will get, I mean, there's been times I've seen what had to have been a hundred of them at a time in here. And it's gorgeous. Um, we feed these birds in the winter. We have a very tall cedar tree down there in the front of the property by our pond. Uh, you probably saw us feeding our fish and turtles and stuff yesterday uh, in our pond. Well, in this cedar tree, we hang a, a bird feeder and the cardinals come in in the winter and when there's snow everywhere which doesn't happen so much in our part of Virginia but we get a few snows a year but everything's white that tree's green and we have dozens and dozens of cardinals sitting in that tree and it looks like a Christmas tree like a living breathing Christmas tree it's beautiful uh, so this kind of talking about all this wildlife and there were deer when I was walking up here to our campsite this morning there were three deer and they don't even run from me um, they just they see that I'm coming and once I get close enough they'll mosey off and they always circle back around yesterday when I was cutting some firewood which I'm going to do a lot of today I didn't get much done yesterday because I was so exhausted it was my first day off after five days the last couple of days were 12 hour days um, so I tried to cut firewood but I just didn't have the energy to do too much I don't know how I've gotten as much done around this homestead as I have in the last six months well I do I get up at four o'clock in the morning and I work here for many hours before I go to work, then I come home, and if, if I have anything left, I'll do some more. Um, but I was cutting firewood, and I, I'm coming up, and there were some deer up here at the campground, and I cut firewood maybe 80 yards down the hill. So I thought, well, I'll start this chainsaw up, and they're going to run away. But um, I started cutting wood, and when I was finished, I looked, and I noticed they'd closed the distance on me. The point is, these deer aren't scared of me. Uh, the, the raccoon didn't seem to be too concerned yesterday as he was shimmying up that tree. So, nine days away from quitting the job that I hate, nine days at most, again, I'm prepared to just leave if, if I have to um, before that, which I hope I don't have to do. Uh, so I'm thinking about what am I going to do out here on the homestead because I'm going to just throw myself into this. Uh, we've been thinking about getting goats and or sheep for some time you know we've got six acres we we have plenty of space where we could put some large herbivores and they could help us uh, we wouldn't have to mow quite as much grass and so we could uh, a lot of folks have been saying oh you should do this you should do that it, well we're listening to what you guys are saying and we're, some people have said goats and sheep it would help with caring for the property and then we could breed them of course and sell the offspring and we think we're going to get into that. That's one of our plans. Um, but the wildlife, when I posted the video yesterday about the wren coming into the house, there were a lot of comments, and a lot of you might take the people that make these comments as being kooky or nutty, but I don't. You know, people were saying there was one comment that said, uh, this is a powerful comment. Uh, this person said, when you take the time to look, uh, you see things, or, or you'll be amazed at what you see, something along those lines. And other people have said, and I don't discredit this, that uh, nature or the universe or some great spirit is trying to tell us something. And, you know, with the white deer my wife and son saw the other day while I was working and we're making this transition, uh, I don't discount that this, it might be factual that these are signs. So we've got wildlife descending on us. I'm watching the hawk fly around hunting. He dove after one of the golden finches and uh, he missed or she missed. And I was happy to see that because I love those little finches. But I know that that hawk is eventually going to not miss and that's just part of nature. But, um, you know, the raccoon raided our corn thinking, how do I keep the raccoon out of the corn? I don't want to kill it. And guys, I mentioned when I was talking about my annoying neighbor with the crayon about how I could kill deer here if I wanted to legally. I could get a damage permit, and I mentioned I'd been putting that off, and then that way I could actually kill them at any time during the year legally. Well, guys, I'm going to elaborate on this a little bit because I think that caused some, some confusion. I've 
put off doing that because I haven't wanted to kill the deer. Um, you know, I have my second cup of coffee a lot of times up here at the campground, but I always have my first cup of coffee on the front porch, watching the pond, waiting for the sun to come up. And there's been times, just last week, I'm down there and 50 yards away at most, there's a doe with her two fawns and the doe, the mother is nibbling on stuff around the, the tree line and the fawns are chasing themselves around, chasing each other around in the field. Uh, do, jumping in the air doing 180s and 360s and it's entertaining and the whole time they know I'm there and uh, I just can't I don't want to shoot them I mean we can afford food and, yeah we want to raise and grow some of our own out here and you know when we lived in the Philippines there were extended periods of times I'm talking months where we lived off of vegetables and rice and meat was a uh, and I'm not a vegetarian, and I'm not anti-eating meat. I love meat. You saw yesterday my, my wife cooked some very delicious pork ribs. My point is, my needs are few. Um, I was out of the U.S. long enough to learn the difference between a want and a need. I went for I don't know how long without eating ice cream. I went for years without drinking real milk. We drank powdered milk over there um, when we lived in what they call the provinces down in Mindanao, which is out in the jungle. Uh, it was funny, when we first came here, a good friend of ours, and I don't want to embarrass her, but she came out to our place for the first time, and we're pretty far out. And she said, oh my God, what do you guys do if you run out of milk? And my wife and I just laughed and laughed, and our friend was like, I don't get it. And I told her, you know, I went for two years without drinking milk, so if we run out of milk, I think we're going to be okay. So, anyway, straight to the point. I'm thinking, aside from getting goats and sheep and all these other things, and, and building better gardens to protect our vegetables from Pitt the raccoon, uh, about having designated areas here on the homestead that is for the wildlife. Um, and actually, I mean, putting in some work to plant certain things that they like to eat, maybe certain types of clover for the deer. And maybe, you know, I have some trees that the deer have attacked. I mean, I, I've been trying to build this privacy screen down here in, in a beautiful man-made forest for the two plus, well, two years we've been here. And I'm getting there, but every now and then um, I'll forget to spray my trees in time. I have this uh, deer repellent spray. It's called I Must Garden Deer Spray, and I'm not being paid to promote it. I'm just telling you what I use so you can use it too. It's effective. It works. I'll spray trees with it, and it's natural ingredients, and it's pet-friendly. Um, it's plant friendly, so it's it's not a toxin like those people at Monsanto make. Um, it's safe for the homestead, and it works. But I need to spray about every six or eight weeks, and it's not expensive. It's like 15 or 16 dollars a bottle, but it works. So basically, once I'm back to where I have the time to make sure I'm effectively spraying everything in a timely manner, because I'm not working at this place that I hate that makes me miserable anymore, um, I can have both. I can have what I want. I can have my trees where I want them. And the deer who, you know, they eat the buds in the spring because the buds are very high in nitrogen and that converts to protein faster than the older growth. That's why they like the buds. Um, so I get that. They need that. Well, I mean, I've got all this space up here. If I can get it to where I keep them up here the majority of the time, I'm going to walk over here and tell you a very sweet story about some poplar trees because I have a lot of poplar trees down here on the tree line that I've planted and every now and then uh, the deer will get a poplar tree that I really liked but I've learned to tell myself okay that poplar was meant for them but as you can see I have no shortage of poplar trees I'm zooming in here on a new poplar tree it's about two and a half feet tall and they're everywhere I don't know if it's easy to see or not in this screen from this angle but if from where my vantage point, I mean, I see hundreds of poplar trees, and inside this tall grass we have maple, oak, uh, sourwood. The sun's kind of bright right there, but we have a bunch of sourwood over there that's already eight feet tall. We have locusts. But here's a sweet story about poplar trees. My wife is teaching me so much. I'm always talking about how beautiful she is. She's beautiful on the outside, and she's beautiful on the inside, too. But they don't have poplar trees in the Philippines. It's tropical there, and poplar trees are deciduous trees, as you know. But the first time she saw a poplar tree, she fell in love with poplar trees, and they're now her favorite trees. And you know why? Let me show you something. She said, their leaves look like t-shirts. The leaves look like folded t-shirts. 
And and isn't she right? I mean, that looks like if you're in the department store and they have the Hanes t-shirts folded up in the box or whatever, it looks like that. You know, I'm 44 years old. I'm from the U.S. We had a poplar tree in my yard where I grew up, and I never saw that. I never saw that the... Uh, the leaves look like t-shirts. My wife pointed that out to me. And I respect another animal. I view it differently that I never did before after my wife got here. You know, we flew here. It's a nice story in here. I go on a tangent again. But we flew from the Philippines. We flew from Manila to Beijing, China, where we missed our flight and uh, had to get a, another flight. And then we flew into Washington, D.C. And the story behind this is we missed our flight. And so we went to the desk of the airline, said, hey, we missed our flight. Can we just jump on the next one? And guys, here's something we take for granted in the U.S. Uh, and it shows the power of a U.S. passport, and it shows the misfortune of folks who don't have a U.S. passport. My wife had her visa, uh, and she had a Filipino passport. And my son and I both have U.S. passports. He's a U.S. citizen by birthright uh, because his father's a U.S. citizen, even though he's born on foreign soil. And we had to go through the lengthy process. It took almost a year for us to process everything and get here. We had to do the DNA test to prove that he was my son, not the jeepney driver's son. And I, I am glad I had to do that because uh, the thought of a kid being taken away from its real parents and escorted out of the country through improper means, just it's terrible and it happens a lot over there. My wife had to go through an interview um, before she was allowed to leave. Uh, and they catch a lot of this human trafficking activity there. There was a girl the day before, the woman who interviewed my wife told my wife this story. The day before, the girl goes in for an interview. The story is she's 20 or something. She's going to another country. I'm not going to mention the country. It wasn't the U.S., but another country um, to marry this guy and blah, blah, blah. Well, the girl gets into the safe room with, for the interview and breaks down crying, saying, please help me. I'm 14 years old. My parents arrange this for money and please help me and so they were able to save this girl so I'm happy I had to take a DNA test to prove that my son was mine okay that's my stance on it but we miss our plane in China go to the counter and uh, we say we need to get on the next plane the woman looks at us says let me see your passports we show them the passports and the woman says okay you and you pointed at me and my son says you guys can get on the next flight um, pointed at my wife and said, you have to wait three days and you can get on a flight in three days if space is available. I'd never experienced anything like that and I'd traveled around the world several times by this point. I've been in several countries, mostly as a private citizen uh, or a civilian. This is after my military time and uh, it blew my mind. And we asked, well, why is this? And the woman said, well, because you're a Filipina, you're from the Philippines, and these guys are from uh, America, so they, they get, you know, it blew my mind. So I said, we're not leaving my wife behind in China. Uh, put us on the next plane, I'll buy her ticket. And there was a flight in eight hours, and the ticket cost $3,000. My wife started crying, and she said, you guys go, I'll be there in three days. I said, are you crazy? You think I'm going to leave you in China while me and our son fly to the U.S.? No. I broke out the debit card and I said, here, I, I had the money at the time, um, which I don't always have extra money, but I did that time. And I said, here, we're buying her ticket. She's going with us. And so we bought her ticket and we got on the next plane. So we come to the U.S. and we all came here as a family. And I would do it no other way. I could have come back before I did, but I wasn't coming until I could bring my wife and son with me. So, um, now I came here a few months alone to get everything started rolling, get back, get an address, get all, get back on the map, I guess, and uh, or on the radar, and start the, the processing work for the visa to get her here legally. So, anyway, we get to the U.S. We were so excited. We rolled in here at 3 o'clock in the morning, couldn't sleep, even though we were exhausted. We didn't sleep on the plane because we had all this excitement. So, the first day we're here, we go driving around, and we're going down the road, and there are some vultures eating a deer, and my wife gets all excited. She goes, eagle, 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 is that a bald eagle? And I'm laughing and laughing, and I'm like, no, honey, that's not a bald eagle. That's a vulture. They're buzzards. So I'm telling her what they are and what they do, and I'm like, they're gross. They're nasty. This is They eat dead stuff. And we stopped. We were looking at them. They're at the side of the road, and she goes, there's nothing gross about that bird. That bird is beautiful. It's so big, it's, it's majestic. You know, that's my word, not hers, but she's describing it as being majestic. 
So for the first time, I looked at a buzzard through different eyes, and I thought, you know, she's right. That is a very beautiful bird. For some reason, we have considered this animal to be gross because of what it eats. So now, here, several couple years later, uh, I see poplar trees differently. I see them as little t-shirt factories. And I view buzzards as beautiful, majestic creatures. So anyway, um, I haven't killed the deer here because I don't want to. I put off the damage permit intentionally because I don't want to kill them. And I'm thinking, you know, all these animals, all this wildlife descending upon us yesterday, call me kooky. I know I am. They called me Crazy Lake in the Army. but. Uh, Maybe the message here is not just, yes, you get to be with your family full-time moving forward, but you get to be with us as well. I mean, this is the kind of stuff I love. There goes another one of those golden finches. Um, I love sitting here. I mean, I'll read my books and take a break and see what's out there. But there's enough for us. And there's enough for them. We've got the space. And so I'm thinking about, I mean, a lot of people might consider this a waste of time, but I'm actually thinking about maybe building some simple structures to keep the wildlife away from what it is I'm trying to grow for them until it matures enough to where it's actually uh, to the point of maturity that I, I want them to be able, and then just kind of open the gate and let them in. I don't know. Is that crazy? You know, it's funny. I told the story about how Mr. J, we call him, would come over and give the lectures in the fall about how I better not be hunting no deer on my property. Well, he does. Or I don't know if he does, but they do on his property. I hear the gunshots in the winter. So what that was, he wasn't trying to protect the deer. That was about making sure I didn't get that big buck that might be on my property one minute and then 30 minutes later is on his. Um, I'm not an idiot. I might have been born at night, but it wasn't last night. So... And, and I mention that because if I do do this, I understand, you know, like with the hawk that was chasing the golden finch. The hawk missed. He's eventually going to catch a finch. Um, if I do do what I'm talking about, will I be baiting animals in for my neighbors to kill? Well, I know these folks over here don't hunt. This guy over here through the woods doesn't hunt. Um, I know they do over at Mr. J's place. Well, maybe. The answer might be maybe. I mean, you, you, I can't keep them safe all the time. Once they leave my property, wherever they go, they're on their own. Um, I know that they're going to shoot stuff over there anyway because I hear it every deer season. I mean, I get up at between 4 and 5, and by the time the daylight, daylight starts breaking, I, I hear the guns going off. But um, they're not. the guns will not be coming from this property. I'm not going to let anybody hunt here, and, and frankly, I'm just not going to do it either. So maybe that clarifies up what I said. I had a lot of people... Say, oh, you're terrible, you're what's wrong with the world, and you must hate kittens too, or something like that, because I'd mentioned I'd put it off getting a, a damage permit for the deer. So it, it was intentional. Um, so these are my thoughts, and this is my morning ramble, and a couple stories about missing the plane in China, and leaves of the poplar tree looking like t shirts, and making sure to. KYA, just in case things get too bad. Uh, I'm excited to be out. I'm really trying to do the right thing and working out my two weeks notice. But at the same time, I know who I'm dealing with. I know the mentality I'm dealing with. I mean, you know, when you got uh, one out of three of our delivery routes don't get serviced every day because such a massive shortage of work staff, and yet the person in charge cuts people's hours because they don't like them. <sighs> What's that tell you about how much that person cares about the customer, you know? So that's what I'm dealing with. So just in case, I mean, I got, I've got that. So I'm going to go ahead and go. My beautiful bride is going to be waking up soon, as is my, well, my son's not going to be waking up soon. Guys, a lot of you see the videos we make in the mornings, and you're like, where's your son? He's so cute. Where's your son? My son is a seven-year-old teenager when it comes to sleep. He loves to sleep in. And uh, we're going to have to break that habit a couple weeks before school starts. And I'm so happy that once I do quit my job, even if it is nine days away, I'm going to have a full month with him before school starts. That is a blessing. So we're going to be making up for some lost time and uh, spending every morning cuddling and snuggling, which I'll get to do today, even though he's going to wake up late because I'm off today. So that's what I'm going to do. I hope you guys have a good day. Thank you for joining me again. Thank all of you who have subscribed to Homesteading Off the Grid. Two weeks ago, I think we had 2,000 subscribers. Um, as of this recording, we're over 34,000. So I don't know what's bringing you folks in. I'm not going to question it. I'm thankful for it. I'm grateful for it. I'm, I'm thankful to each and every one of you 
who takes the time to watch our videos and give us words of encouragement. Um, you've got to try my wife's honey barbecue ribs. I'll link that video to the end of this one so you see the recipe. It's simple and it's delicious. So, as always, when I have these morning rants, I'm going to give you a parting shot of the sun coming up over the homestead here. Six minutes after seven, and that's about the time the sun breaks over that tall tree over there. Beautiful poplar tree with all those t-shirts. We'll see you next time.